About 10 years ago I lived downtown in a major metropolis in the US. I was in my early 20s so I decided to move in with an old buddy of mine. I've always been more of a night person and my buddy was a day person, so I would often find myself bored after my roommate went to sleep. To pass the time, I used to go for long walks in the park and spend time thinking about my life and whatnot. I spent a couple years living like that, walking alone at night, and never once had a reason to feel afraid. I always used to joke with my roommate that even the escorts and homeless people in the city were polite. But all of that changed in just a few minutes of one creepy evening. It was a Friday night or early Saturday, whatever you want to call it. Somewhere between 3 and 4 in the morning, and I was walking near a police patrol park quite a ways from my building. It was a quiet night, even for a weeknight, with very little traffic and almost no one on foot. The park, as it was most nights, was completely empty. I turned down a short side street in order to loop back to my building when I first noticed him. At the far end of the street, on my side, was the silhouette of a man, doing a strange dance. It was a dance I had never seen before, similar to a quick step, but he finished each box with an odd forward stride. I guess you could say he was dance walking, headed straight in my direction. I decided he was probably drunk and didn't pay him any mind, so I stepped as close as I could to the road to give him the majority of the sidewalk to pass me by. The closer he got, the more I realized how gracefully he was moving. He was very tall and lanky, and wearing a new suit. He danced closer still, until I could make out his face. His eyes were open wide and wild, head tilted back slightly, looking off at the sky. His mouth was formed in a painfully wide cartoon of a smile. Between the eyes and the smile, I decided to cross the street before he danced any closer. I took my eyes off of him to cross the empty street. As I reached the other side, I glanced back, and then stopped dead in my tracks. He had stopped dancing and was standing with one foot in the street, perfectly parallel to me. He was facing me but still looking downward. Smile still wide on his lips. I was completely and utterly unnerved by this. I started walking again, but kept my eyes on the man. He didn't move. Once I had put about half a block between us, I turned away from him for a moment to watch the sidewalk in front of me. The street and sidewalk ahead of me were completely empty. Still unnerved, I looked back to where he had been standing to find him gone. For the briefest of moments I felt relieved, until I noticed him. He had crossed the street, and was now slightly crouched down. I couldn't tell for sure due to the distance and the shadows, but I was certain he was facing me. I had looked away from him for no more than ten seconds, so it was clear that he had moved fast. I was so shocked that I stood there for some time, staring at him. And then he started moving toward me again. He took giant, exaggerated tip-toed steps, as if he were a cartoon character sneaking up on someone. Except he was moving very, very quickly. I'd like to say at this point I ran away or pulled out my pepper spray or my cell phone or anything at all, but I didn't. I just stood there, completely frozen as the smiling man crept toward me. And then he stopped again, about a car length away from me. Still smiling his smile, still looking to the sky. When I finally found my voice, I blurted out the first thing that came to mind. What I meant to ask was, what the fuck do you want? in an angry, commanding tone. What came out was a whimper, what the f. Regardless of whether or not humans can smell fear, they can certainly hear it. I heard it in my own voice, and that only made me more afraid. But he didn't react to it at all. He just stood there, smiling. And then, after what felt like forever, he turned around, very slowly, and started dance walking away. Just like that. Not wanting to turn my back to him again, I just watched him go, until he was far enough away to almost be out of sight. And then I realized something. He wasn't moving away anymore, nor was he dancing. I watched in horror as the distant shape of him grew larger and larger. He was coming back my way. And this time he was running. 
I ran too. I ran until I was off of the side road and back onto a better lit road with sparse traffic. Looking behind me then, he was nowhere to be found. The rest of the way home, I kept glancing over my shoulder, always expecting to see his stupid smile, but he was never there. I lived in that city for a couple of months after that night, and I never went out for another walk. There was something about his face that always haunted me. He didn't look drunk, he didn't look high. He looked completely and utterly wild. And that's a very, very scary thing to see. One time I went to the bar with one of my friends. I had just turned 21 so I hadn't been to many bars up to that point. My friend was drinking on the way to the bar so he was already pretty drunk when we got there. When I sat at the bar a cute girl came and talked to me and my friend. She said her name was Emily and I noticed she had really really bright red hair. I assumed she dyed it. It was pretty, but unnatural. Anyways. This girl was flirting with me and my friend. She could tell my friend was already very drunk. To be honest I played along like I was drunk already too since it seemed to be working for my friend. I didn't know if she was just trying to get free drinks so I told her we didn't have much money. She offered to buy us drinks. She kept buying us drinks and I started to get confused as to who she liked between me and my friend. My friend went to the bathroom. Before he came back he was kicked out by the bouncers. He was too drunk. Emily and I went outside with him. She kept telling him to go home with her. He was so out of it he could barely answer her. I told her he was too drunk and that I couldn't let him go anywhere. I didn't want him to wake up hungover in some random house with no car and no idea what happened. Emily kept pushing it, saying that she would take care of him but I told her no because I had to stay with him, I was more sober than him, he was my responsibility. I told her the only way he was going anywhere was if I tagged along. I assumed she thought that I was jealous or cock-blocking but my friend could barely stand and lost interest in Emily already at that point. She immediately started flirting with me and offered to get my friend a taxi to drive him home and said we could go to her place alone. At this point I had a few drinks and I was pretty buzzed so I agreed. We took my friend to the taxi and walked to her car. I slightly stumbled on the way to her car. Wow you're pretty drunk huh? She said smiling as she held onto my arm, yeah, I said. I don't know why but I just felt slightly shy and anxious. Everything was just happening too easy for me so I felt uneasy. We got in her car we drove down the street. Wanna stop at the liquor store and get some more to drink? I'll buy it so don't worry about paying, she offered. I didn't want to drink any more than I already did. I was already buzzed and wanted to be able to carry myself throughout the rest of the night. Sometimes I made myself look stupid when I'm drunk so I didn't want to ruin anything with Emily more than I already did earlier with telling her my friend was too drunk. I told her I was already drunk enough but she insisted. I didn't want to seem lame so I told her to get me a pint of liquor with some apple juice to chase it. She went in the store and came out with a lot more than just a pint. I assumed she wanted to drink more also and that's why she got a fifth instead of a pint. On the car ride we passed the bottle back and forth but she took tiny sips. I tried to take tiny sips but she kept passing me the bottle and telling me to drink. I somehow managed to drink all of my apple juice and pretend to drink the bottle by spitting the liquor in the apple juice bottle. I tossed the apple juice bottle full of liquor out the window before she saw it. I didn't want her to know I was acting drunker than I was. She actually believed I was sloppy drunk when I was simply buzzed. I took a couple more sips of liquor and finished the bottle. Throughout the car ride I called her the wrong name a couple of times to get a reaction out of her. She didn't react to it. She just kept letting me call her Carla without correcting me. For some reason I thought she lied to me about her name initially. We drove up to her house. I pretended to trip and stumbled into her front door. She helped me walk inside by holding me up. She opened her front door, which was unlocked. We walked in her house, she closed her front door and then locked it. 
I thought that was strange but assumed she didn't want anyone walking in on us. I told her that I had to use the bathroom. I walked into her bathroom, locked the door and looked in the mirror. I just felt strange, I felt like something was off. I felt myself becoming more drunk from finishing the bottle earlier. I turned on the sink to make noise and made myself puke up the liquor I drank. I flushed and went to the sink and started drinking the tap water out of my hands to sober up. I just didn't want to be drunk but I still wanted to hook up with Emily so I wanted to pretend to be drunk. I turned the sink off and I could hear her talking to someone, he's drunk as hell. He can barely stand up. You do it. Who was she talking to? And do what? I walked out of the bathroom and into the living room. The moment I stepped into the living room I saw her walking into another room. All I could see was the back of her head, that strange very bright red hair go into another room. I didn't see her face or anything. I just saw her kind of walk fast into the room. The living room was pretty dark. Hey where you going? I slurred like I was drunk. She walked back into the dark living room and up to me, let's go in my room, she said. I looked at her bright red hair and then into her eyes. They were different. Her face was different. It was another girl with the same hair. That's when I realized. It was another girl with the same wig on. It was a wig the whole time. She had changed it with the girl from earlier for whatever reason. My heart felt like it stopped. But I tried to look like I had no idea it was a different girl. I kind of smiled at her and told her I just needed to use the bathroom one more time and told her sorry I was so drunk. She said, it's fine just hurry up in there, I went into the bathroom and locked the door. I heard her whisper something to someone again this time I think I heard a male voice whisper back. I honestly didn't concentrate on listening to exactly what she said, something sketchy was going on and I had to get out of that house. I opened the bathroom window and jumped straight out of it and ran faster than I have ever ran in my life. I didn't look behind myself or anything. I just ran through the backyard, jumped the fence, ran through someone else's backyard, hit a road, and ran toward the main road. I kept running down the main road until I saw a 24-hour convenience store. I ran into the store and stood straight at the front of the store in front of the camera. I called a taxi and went home. I try to think about what happened that night. What was she, or they, planning that night? Why did she tell me a fake name? Why was she trying to get my friend and I so drunk? I thought maybe it was a robbery but she kept spending money on us. She kept buying us drinks and even paid for my friend's taxi cab. And mostly, why did she wear a wig that she gave to another girl to wear? Who was she talking to? What did it mean? And what was in that room they tried to lure me into? Edit, the next day after this incident I went back to the house with a couple of friends to see just what was going on. Nobody was there. No cars, no people, nothing. Just an empty house. I ended up finding out that the house was a summer rental and whoever those people were, they broke into that house and used it for only that night and never came back. A few years ago, I was renting a house in Northern California. The neighborhood was just outside the suburbs. It seemed like the perfect balance of having space and having nice neighbors close enough not to feel isolated. The area had no street lights, so it was very dark at night especially if there were clouds blocking the moonlight. It didn't bother me though. It made my little house feel even more quaint on dark nights. I got home from work one day in midwinter. It was a cloudy night, so pulling up to my house, I saw only what my headlights and front porch light illuminated. When I got out of my car, I caught a whiff of cigarette smoke. That was odd as I had never smelled that before around that house. I didn't see anyone nearby, so I ignored it and went inside. I had just got off a shift with a few hours of overtime, so I felt pretty tired. Even though it wasn't even seven yet, I decided to take a shower and call it a night. I woke up sometime later sure that I had heard a noise inside my house. 
I wasn't worried right away because my friend would sometimes stop by to use my shower after work on his way to his night classes. I even gave him a spare key so he could stop by even if I wasn't home. He would always text me to let me know beforehand though, and I hadn't heard my phone go off. I reached over to my bedside table and picked up my cell phone to see if my friend had sent me a text. The bright light from my phone screen and number pad blinded me. These were the days before phones had a light sensor that would dim the screen in the dark, and this particular phone was so bright I could use it as a flashlight. Through squinted eyes, I could make out that it was 9-something, but I couldn't tell if I had an unread text or not. I set my phone aside and called out my friend's name. There were a couple of seconds of silence before I heard loud footfalls as someone started running through the bottom floor of my house. I leapt out of bed and ran to the closet. They were already up the stairs by the time I had opened the door and stepped inside. That house had three rooms upstairs, two bedrooms on either side of the hallway, the one I was in and a spare, and a bathroom at the end. The bedroom doors were both closed, but the bathroom door was cracked open. I heard whoever was in my house thunder down the hallway past my door and into the bathroom. Thank God he did. That gave me enough time to open the attic access in the ceiling of my closet and hoist myself up. I had just started to lift myself up when the person ran back out of the bathroom. My feet were barely inside of the attic when my bedroom door burst open. I heard footsteps run into my room and stop. When they didn't see me in that room, they ran back to the hallway and into the other room which just had boxes stacked in a corner, some weights, and a table where I painted my miniature models. I guess they decided that if someone were hiding, it would be in the bedroom because they charged back into my room and turned on the light. A moment later the closet door was ripped open. I was crouched in my attic just a foot or so away from the access, so I could try to stop them if they started to climb up. From my vantage point all I could see was from about their knees down. They were wearing dirty blue jeans with frayed cuffs and worn work boots. After a few seconds of looking in the closet, they stepped away and I heard a loud crash come from my room followed by a scream of frustration and anger. That scream was the most unnerving part of the incident for me. It reminded me far too much of my stepfather who would scream in a similar way when he lost his temper. He would eventually be put in a mental hospital for several mental disorders that resulted in erratic and violent tendencies. The man in my house ran back down the stairs. I heard crashes and clatters as things were thrown around and furniture was knocked over. I stayed crouched in the attic. I had left my cell phone when I ran for the closet, and I wasn't certain I could climb down without him hearing. After some time, the noises stopped. I started counting slowly. When I reached 1000, I decided it was safe enough to climb down and call the police. The first thing I noticed when I exited the closet was the intruder had flipped my bed over. I assume in an attempt to find me. That was the loud noise I had heard after he stepped away from the closet. I couldn't find my cell phone, so I went to the landline by the bed and called the police. I waited in my room until I heard them call out from downstairs. The first floor was a mess, but I had expected that. Chairs had been knocked over, the sofa had been flipped. All the books, pictures, and knick-knacks I had on my shelves were strewn across the floor. The cupboards in the kitchen had been opened and all the boxed and canned foods had been thrown to the ground. As far as I could tell though, the only thing missing was a single knife out of the wooden block in my kitchen. The police checked the house from top to bottom. They found that the side door had been forced open by something like a crowbar. They also found a few cigarette butts along my fence line along with some foil and an empty pen tube which the police said people often used to smoke meth, so they thought he had been watching my house for a while. I realized that he must have been out there smoking a cigarette when I got home. They collected up the evidence and told me I should stay with family or friends that night and get that door fixed as soon as possible. I opted to just not sleep. I moved a shelf over to block the broken door and spent the next couple hours cleaning things up. I would often go to the window with a flashlight and shine it along the fence line where the police found the cigarette butts and foil, but I didn't see anything. 
The next day I called to have the door fixed and motion lights installed at the back and sides of my house. I ran a phone cable up into the attic and added a landline. I never wanted to be stuck up there without a phone again. Nothing else happened at that house though. I lived there another three years without incident. One more precaution I took was practicing getting out of my bed, going to my closet and climbing into the attic as quickly and quietly as possible. I even kept at it when I moved, except now I go to a crawl space at the back of the closet instead of the attic. I try not to think about what would have happened if I had been a bit slower getting to the attic or if he hadn't gone into the bathroom at the end of the hall first. This past Monday my co-workers and I returned to our hotel from a day of work out in the field. Elizabeth and I walked to our rooms and as we stood outside of our rooms, I opened mine and I saw someone in the bathroom. I said, hello. Nobody answered. My first instinct was that it was a cleaning lady in there for some reason, and then I saw M.Y. bag with M.Y. clothes in her hands. I said to my co-worker, there's a woman in my room. Then I asked the woman, what are you doing with my stuff? It gets a little fuzzy here because I can't remember everything I said and what she said, but she kept mumbling about how her key still worked, how it still worked and that's how she got in. I was in shock and she was obviously very flustered having been caught mid-robbery. She dropped my bags and fumbled around with her purse and a white plastic bag. By this time my coworker was behind me watching all the insanity unfold. This woman was scrambling and walking towards the door and I said, what's in the bag, thinking it is probably my stuff and so she said, no, no, it's just my things, it's just my things, I'll show you, and so she did. I looked and I didn't see anything of mine and so since I'm obviously in shock at this time, I let her leave. I went into my room and it was ransacked. I did a quick look around to see if anything had been taken. All of my electronics were still there. Then I went into the bathroom and I saw my underwear, my bikini, and my clothes shoved into my own bags randomly. Even my passport was shoved in there. Then I looked on the counter and I saw that she got into my medication. I'm not sure what was going through my head at the moment other than I wanted it back, so I ran out the door to go find her. I ran to the laundry room downstairs and out to the sides of the hotel and I didn't see her. I realized I was never going to find her, so my co-worker and I went down to the lobby to tell them what happened and then we called the police. We went back up to my room to wait and I noticed that there is a metal bat on my bed a little larger than one of those novelty wooden bats you can get at a baseball game but there's also a flashlight on the end. She must have left it behind in her hurry. She also left behind a necklace that must have fallen out of her bag when she was scrambling with mine. I was mostly freaking out at this point because I thought that she'd gotten away with my medication that I need. The police got there and took our statements and looked around the room as well. One thing that I noticed was that there were bits of drywall in the sink and I pointed that out to the cops but none of us really knew where it came from. We started looking at the door and the windows to see if she pried her way in somehow but there was nothing. So we kind of just went with the idea that she had a spare key or something even though the hotel front desk was adamant that there's no way that could be. The officer that came brought two more officers as backup because they thought the woman might still be in the vicinity. But after our statements were taken, there was nothing else they could really do so they left. I sat down to finally make some calls to tell people, and as I'm on the phone, I'm thinking about the drywall in the sink and it still didn't make sense to me. So I'm on the phone and looking at the drywall and the mirror on the wall right above it, and then it hit me. I got my co-worker and asked her to help me pull this mirror on the wall. And we took the mirror down and there's a hole there just big enough for a desperate junkie to squeeze through. I asked Brian and Elizabeth if I should call the cops again to let them know that I found this and my boss said, there's still two cop cars in the parking lot. So I went down to tell them and the female cop kinda rolled her eyes, but the young guy said, I'll come check it out. They both came back up, looked in the hole, and found. A pillow, blankets, cigarettes, clothes, toothbrushes. This woman had been living in the wall behind my mirror for God knows how long. She had access to me and my room at all times. 
I know it might be hard to picture, there was a crawlspace about two feet wide in between the two rows of rooms. One of the officers called the original officer to come back and take pictures of this. She explained to him what's going on and all I hear over the radio is, no fucking way. He comes back, takes pictures, and is just as mind blown as the rest of us. Obviously we packed up and left immediately. What's even crazier is she has probably been there a long time. The last time we stayed at this hotel I would randomly smell cigarette smoke and I assumed someone was smoking in their bathroom and it was traveling through the vents. But nope a junkie was smoking just on the other side of my mirror. She had access to other rooms too. The holes in the walls were from a renovation and the hotel hadn't properly patched and just covered up with mirrors. She could have been hanging out in people's rooms when they were gone. Anyway this was insane and I'm taking a little time off.